Hi everyone, my name is Yu Heng. I'm currently a master's student from Xi'an Zhao Tong University, and I'm going to give a presentation about our paper, Arbitrage Attack, Manners of the War in Night. In this paper, we introduce a possible arbitrary attack against decentralized blockchain oracles, and we further analyze such an attack by using game theory approaches. This is a joint work done with Ji Lianglian, Zhou Su, who are also from Xi'an Zhao Tong University, and Yu Yiwang from ETH Zurich. So let's get started. The first question that I need to be answered is that why do we need Oracle in our blockchain system? So in the previous time, if we want to provide services in different areas, a third party agency is always needed, which is usually considered as fully trusted and is also responsible for many important tasks like resource allocation and so on, depending on the area it is applied. Even though such a scheme is pretty efficient, it may encounter problems caused by single-point failure. And in order to deal with such a problem, blockchains are gradually adopted in our current systems due to the nature of decentralization. And among all those blockchain-based applications, smart contracts actually play a very important part. Specifically, smart contracts are designed based on Turing complete programs and can be automatically executed when certain conditions are satisfied. In that case, if a user wants to trigger the execution of a smart contract, it is required to send the evidence to the smart contract via a transaction. Once the transaction is received, the smart contract will begin to verify whether the conditions are satisfied. If they do so, it will begin to automatically execute the following function defined in the smart contract. It should also be noted that smart contracts are published in the blockchain network so that every user could uh, verify the correctness of the smart contract. And uh, in that case, the security of smart contract based application can be guaranteed. Although such methods sound impeccable, uh, there are still many limitations that may prevent the smart contract from being used in more areas. And one of these limitations is that smart contract cannot actually reach the off-chain information in the real world by itself. For example, if you are designing a weather gambling application based on smart contracts, the condition will be pretty simple. If it's sunny, we send 10 Ethereum to Alice, and if it's rainy, we send 10 Ethereum to Bob. However, the key problem here is that how could the contract know the weather is so that it can judge who is the real winner at last? In order to do that, we need to design a system that can carry the off-chain information like the weather to the blockchain and then send it to the smart contracts. And uh, such a system is what we call Oracle, also known as data feed. Up to now, there have been many different Oracle protocols that have been proposed. And uh, generally speaking, all these protocols can be uh, categorized into two different types. The one is centralized Oracle and the other one is decentralized Oracle. For a centralized Oracle system, and there will be a server of chain to collect information from different information sources, and then the information will be sent to the Oracle's on-chain interface, which is a, a small contract. And after that, the information will be sent by the Oracle in interface smart contract to other users who really need the information. Uh, such a system it could be really simple and uh, it also could be efficient, but it once again brings back the problem of single point failure. And in order to deal with such a problem, more and more people began to design decentralized Oracle. And in a decentralized Oracle system, any kind of users are allowed to provide their personal opinion of, of, a, of a certain information request. And such a kind of personal opinion are formed by their subscribed information sources which are no, unknown to the uh, Oracle server. Uh, after all, after a time period for collecting information, the server will do some aggregation and adjustment to the collecting information and then finally send the information back to the user. The detailed procedures for a decentralized Oracle system to finish a query task can be shown as follows. To start with, a customer contract will send a query request to the Oracle interface uh, together with certain query fee. And after that, after noticing that there is a new query request, 
the information provider will provide the information to the Oracle interface uh, via a transaction. It should be noted that the reason why many decentralized or oracles use transactions to transfer information is that the real identity of these information providers are actually unknown. And so that in order to uh, guarantee the security requirements like the feasibility, uh, many decentralized oracles will let the information providers to attach their information in the transaction and send the trans transaction to their on-chain interface. And after collect the information, the Oracle will send the, the results and the final information back to the customer contract, uh, which means that the uh, query request is successf successfully finished. And at last, the information provider will be rewarded uh, for its participation. Notice that there are many two ways for information providers to include their information into the transactions. The first one is to simply attach the information to the transaction. Uh, there is a certain space of uh, there are a certain space where which can let the information proposal to uh, write in different kinds of messages. And the second one is to use the transaction amount to re to represent the information they provide. Uh, for example, if the customer wants to know to the exchange rate of two different assets, the information provider can simply transfer these two kinds of assets to the Oracle according to the exchange rates it wants to provide. Since there are many customer contracts that rely on the Oracle's output to do further operations, so the Oracle security is actually a very important problem that cannot be ignored. And just after we submitted this paper, uh, some accident happened to uh, Oracle called PATH uh, that is wrongly reported the uh, uh, Bitcoin's value. Uh, such a small problem may only last for uh, several blocks, but consider the uh, amount of the customer, contra uh, uh, customer contracts and the, the amount of the transaction, there still could be great loss caused to the customer contracts. And therefore, in order to protect the Oracle from all kinds of security problems, uh, there are many countermeasures that have been designed. For example, in the decentralized Oracle systems, uh, there are reputation schemes and uh, incentive schemes that to guarantee the information providers will provide uh, accurate information instead of malicious ones. And for the Oracle platform itself, uh, many people focus on the contract security, and there are also some uh, aggreg aggregation scheme design problems and uh, adjustment scheme design problems there to guarantee the the accuracy of the Oracle's outputs. Uh, however, there is a very important part that we find that most of the uh, work ignore is that the part between the Oracle platform itself and the information provider. Uh, to be more specific, in the blockchain system, the information provider cannot directly send the transaction to the Oracle. Uh, instead, there is the, uh, uh, something like a transfer station there which is formed by mining uh, different mining pools. Uh, there could be miners in there, uh, but there also can be considered as mining pools with less hash rate. And in that case, the information providers need to first broadcast this transaction to the whole network, which will be later noticed by the mining pools. And later the mining pools will start to try to solve the uh, POW problem. And uh, finally, uh, the first one to solve the problem can broadcast its uh, uh, block to the whole network and add it to the longest chain. Uh, the Oracle will later notice the newly block, uh, newly published block and uh, uh, receive the, all the transactions included in the uh, newly published block. Uh, however, the existence of such a, a transfer station actually exerts negative influence on the uh, decentral, decentralized Oracle's security. But because first of all, the, all the information contained in each transaction is actually unencrypted, which means that the mining pools are able to know what kind of information are attached in the transaction, and they may be able to classify uh, all these kind of transa new transactions. And the second one is that all these kind of mining pools are all rational agents, which means that they are they are seeking the opportunity to uh, obtain more profits than than simply following the uh, pro protocols. And the other two reasons is that each of these mining pools have overwhelming hash rates, 
uh, which means they have the high possibility for them to mine a new a valid block. Uh, besides, uh, these mining pools actually have the right to determine what kind of emission, what kind of transaction will be included in their block. Uh, and this problem is actually uh, related to a widely discussed problem called minor extractable value. Conclusively, there is a, a possibility for these mining pools to deliberately reject to include certain types of transactions based on the information they carried. And in that case, the Oracle will be not able to receive all kinds of information, which may make their uh, output become biased and, and maybe deviated from the real value. So that's the basic idea of our uh, arbitrary tag introduced in our paper. And in this part, we began to introduce the detailed step of our arbitrage attack. So to start with, consider there is a customer customer contract that offers services for exchanging two different kind of uh, credible currencies. And uh, it will send a query request to the Oracle platform for the current exchange rates. Uh, after noticing that there is a new query request, a malicious user will propose a wrong exchange rate to the Oracle platform in the form of a transaction. This transaction will be later broadcast to the whole blockchain network and will be noticed by the original mining pools. And at that time, the mining pools will know, will know that it will be a, a perfect time for them to carry out the arbitrary attack. So they will start it by binding and loaning a large amount of assets that will be later to be used to uh, arbitrage. Uh, after the malicious information was uh, accepted by the Oracle platform, there will be some honest verifier notice that there are something wrong happened to the uh, to the Oracle platform. So they want to send transaction to it in order to make some adjustment. But uh, at that time, the original manipulators will deliberately refuse to uh, packing this kind of transaction into their into the Block, block they are they are currently mining immediately uh, until the uh, whole information collection collection uh, period time ends, uh, and that and uh, at that time the uh, Oracle platform will give the customer contract a uh, result which is kind of which is kind of manipulated by the rational mining pool since uh, the adjustment transactions are not. Uh, are not received by the uh, Oracle platform. And in that case, the customer contract will, uh, will in the uh, next several blocks, it will exchange the uh, two different kind of cryptocurrency uh, according to a wrong exchange rate. And at that time, the recent man pools can sell all the prepared uh, arbitrary asset to the customer contract and obtain a larger amount of uh, arbitrage uh, profits. Although such an arbitrage attack might sound uh, pretty ap applicable. There are still many factors that may prevent the attack from the uh, final success. Uh, consider there is a verification transaction coming to the blockchain network. Uh, all the regional manipulators need to make decisions during the whole uh, verification time period, which will last for uh, several blocks. Uh, and, the, and at each block, the manipulators need to make the decision. Uh, there are there are only two choices. Uh, one is to not include in the transaction into the current mining block, and the second one is to include the transaction into the current mining block. And such a decision needs to be made uh, during the whole verification period. And since the, all the mining pools are rational, there might be divergence during the during the attack. Uh, that uh, since they will only take the action to maximize their own benefits. And another important thing that I need to be noted is that the hash rates of all mining pools are, are actually different from each other. And uh, at each, each block, there will be only one mining pool to decide whether uh, the attack will continue. So before the formal analysis of game theory, we first provide several assumptions which may help us to simplify the whole problem. And the first assumption is that we assume each mining pool has sufficient property to propose a large enough transaction to every victim smart contracts. 
And uh, such a uh, assumption is actually pretty reasonable since there are many services, especially in the DeFi systems, but there are services like Flash Loan that can help the mining pools to uh, prepare uh, prepare the arbitrage assets before the attack. Uh, in that case, under the uh, summation, uh, under the, under such assumption, there will be only one winner in our uh, arbitrary arbitrary attack. Since uh, currently many uh, smart contract, especially especially the trading pool contract, they will adopt the constant product market maker, uh, which also known as CPMM. And uh, in that case, if the first if the first mining pool proposed a transaction with a large enough amounts. But then the second second mining pool will obtain uh, nearly no profits uh, due to the great slippage caused by the first uh, transaction. And the second assumption is that uh, mining pools cannot ignore value block pro pro proposed by others, uh, which means there will be no forking in our analysis. The finally assumption is that uh, all mining pools are rational and uh, they are all aware of each other's hash rate uh, proportion. And uh, based on the proposed assumptions, we can model the whole arbitrary attack into a multi series static game of perfect information. And our final goal is to find the Nash equivalent strategy for each uh, participant in mining pool uh, during the whole attack procedure. Uh, however, there is a, a problem that is we saw during the game theory analysis is that uh, each mining pool's utility function is actually related to its hash rate. Uh, besides, if a mining pool chose the delay strategy and there will be no immediate rewards. So in that case, we, if we simply analyze the whole game from block one to block n, then there will just be too many situations need, need to be considered in order to get the final utility function. So in this paper, we adopt the reverse induction method since the situation in the last game is certain. And uh, the, whole, uh, analysis, the whole detailed analysis is written in our paper. So if you are interested in the uh, deduction procedures, you can go to look at our paper. And the final conclusion of the whole analysis is pretty close with our intuition. If we use B to represent the attack profits and use A to represent the normal transaction fee, then if for a multiple G, if it's Nash equilibrium strategy at a game is Y, then for all the game before it was its Nash equilibrium strategy will still be Y. Uh, however, on the other hand, if the multiple Nash equilibrium strategy at some game is N, then the then there might be differences uh, in the game before. Uh, the change of the uh, Nash equilibrium strategies can be clearly shown in this figure. Uh, as you can see, with the game proceeds, uh, the manipulus whose uh, uh, natural equilibrium strategy is Y uh, in the previous game will become will gradually become uh, N in the uh, game after. Uh, and it seems that the manipulus with higher hash rates seem to be uh, more stick to the uh, carrying out the arbitrary attack compared with the uh, mining pools with lower, ha lower hash rates. So beside the change of Nash equilibrium strategies, in this paper, we also calculate the price of anarchy to evaluate, evaluate the uh, collaboration of these original mining pools. As you can see, uh, as the uh, attack profit B is greatly uh, larger than the uh, normal transaction fee A, uh, the mining pools seem to be more willing to collaborate with each other to carry out this attack. Uh, however, on the other hand, if the uh, arbitrary attack arbitrary attack profit B is not uh, that large compared with the normal trans transaction fee A, then they might be uh, then the decisions of the mining pools could be pretty divided. And at the end of this presentation, we will talk about the limitations possible extensions and the future work of all this paper. Uh, as for the limitations, uh, the limitation of this paper mainly lies in the uh, game theory analysis since we made a lot of assumptions in order to simplify the whole problem. And the first limitation is that we assume that all manipulates are rational. However, in reality, there could be uh, honest manipulates that will 
uh, include all the transactions being broadcast in the whole blockchain network. And the second limitation is that we consider the reward A and, A and B to be static. And uh, as we all know, there could be the the reward could change during the uh, arbitrage attack. And the third limitation is that uh, we just totally ignore the forking problem, but there is probabilities that uh, mining pools might uh, 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 collaborate with each other once again, uh, just to uh, want to propose a fork because they don't want to admit the uh, admit the uh, the winner of the uh, previous arbitrage attack. And as for the possible extensions, just like we mentioned in our paper, we believe that the arbitrary attack can be actually extended to a more general model instead of a simply uh, a simple decentralized uh, blockchain oracle. And we believe such a uh, such a such an attack or other attacks that are similar to the arbitrary attack mentioned in our paper uh, will happen to uh, all the. Uh, application that's based on transaction information. Uh, as for the future work, we our main idea is to design the countermeasure against the arbitrage attack, and the and we want to design the countermeasure from two different uh, aspects. The first one is the incentive design, and the second one is to uh, you, uh, use the cryptography tools to make the all the transactions information to be indiscriminable for uh, the mining pools. That's all about my presentation. Thanks for your listening.